So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Ian Blackford basically saying that we need 200 Australia deals to replicate what we've lost due to um, Brexit. And obviously that's going to be impossible to get, especially since that magic unicorn America deal has gone. Um, that's not going to happen. We'll talk about that in a different video um, another time. But um, Ian Blackford puts it out there quite um, quite easily, really. The fact is that we've lost so much in trade with the EU. And then Fiona Bruce comes in saying something like, Oh, yeah, you know, but 5% whiskey, though. And it's like, that's not going to resolve the problems that we have and the money that we've lost. Honestly, she's a real joker. But let's watch the video. Yeah, absolutely. And I'm, I have to say, I'm deeply worried about what this means for, for farming and indeed for, for crofters as well. Um, and of course, we shouldn't just be thinking about the Australian deal because this is the first trade deal that the UK has done of this kind <clears throat> and could open the door for similar deals with Argentina, with Brazil, with the US and uh, with Canada as well. I but mean, presumably you welcome the, the, the drop of the tariff on, Scots whisk, on Scottish whiskey. On yeah, Scottish. but the point, the, po the point is that we created a set of circumstances where our farming industry is going to be imperiled. Because really what we've done is, as I said yesterday in the House of Commons, we've sold the farm, literally sold the farm. You've got a situation where the Australians are talking about the potential to sell $1.3 billion of products to the UK. And we're talking about, by the government's own analysis, an impact on our GDP of, wait for it, 0.02%. We would need 200 Australian trade deals to replicate what we've lost with Brexit. Not to forget the fact that that's within the margin of error, which is at around, I think, 0.02%. So this trade deal could have no impact on our GDP at all. Um, in terms of we can get cheaper meat, but it's going to decimate farming. So it might have a no to negative impact on our GDP. Um, so it's just ridiculous the arguments these people come out with, not in Blackford, obviously, but Brexiteers and, you know, um, what's the name? Fiona Bruce trying to kind of balance it out by saying, oh, but, uh, you know, we got rid of the, you know, the tariffs on whiskies. Like, there's still rules of origins checks. There's still all of those other things that are going to um going to impact scotch so it's not going to make that much of a difference really when you think about it so it's a bit of a joke especially since it's a luxury product that's very expensive as is how many more people are going to buy it compared to how many people buy it now in australia i don't think that's on the top of every aussie's list is like yes now i can buy scotch for you know five or ten australian dollars less get in you know on a 60 bottle dollar of scotch or you know a hundred dollar bottle of scotch or whatever it's just ridiculous but nonetheless, you've got a situation where the 5% tariff on scotch has been scrapped as part of the deal, and whiskey's worth around, what, some £4 billion to the Scottish economy, whereas beef farming, I'm not saying it's not important, but it's worth about a billion. Well, so you must no, welcome that aspect hang on, hang on. of the deal. You've got about 67,000 people that are connected with Scottish agriculture in one way, form or another, and we've just created a situation that, as of the beginnings of this deal, 25,000 tonnes of lamb can come into the, the UK. That's three times as much as currently comes in. Within 10 years, you'd be talking about 75,000 tonnes, 10 times. And you're really talking about, when you're talking about hill sheep farmers, whether it's in Scotland, Wales, or parts of Northern England, you're talking about, in many cases, subsistence farming. And you're talking about people that are going to be forced out of business. Now, one of the real ironies of this is the government's negotiated a deal where people can go and work in Australia. They're going to be sending people from the UK to Australia to work in farms in Australia to put our farmers out of business. That's what this government has done. Mm -hmm. It is madness on stilts. And, you know, we've had a situation that Brexit was about okay. taking back control. We've just sold out our fishermen and we're just about to sell so out our farmers. And that, that's the point, isn't it? Like, yes, you know, the 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 um, you know the meat industry is uh, worth a lot less than the Scotch industry per se, but those jobs all have an impact. Um, and how much is the Scotch um, industry going to grow in um, the UK? Thanks to, or sorry, in Scotland, thanks to this Australia trade deal, probably not much. But farming is going to be as absolutely decimated. So you're going to impact. You're going to destroy farming. You're going to destroy meat processing because all the stuff we buy from Australia will be processed and probably frozen. You're going to destroy that industry as well, um, among others, potentially haulage or, um, you know, uh, companies that typically um, move goods between the farms and the um, abattoirs into the uh, supermarkets, etc. They're going to be ruined as well. Or they're going to have to change their supply routes. But um, it's just an absolute joke, really, that we've signed up to a trade deal which massively benefits Australia way more than us. We get very little in terms of anything. 
um, and you've just further destroyed the agriculture, you know, the agri-foods industry, which has already taken um, a pounding because of Brexit. You know, we've lost our main export market, the EU. Um, and, you know, once these other trade deals come in with Australia, potentially, I mean, with Brazil even, um, New Zealand, if that ever happens, the Yanks, which is looking less likely, but if that ever does happen, you've got farmers having to compete with more countries. They're going to be further in the doghouse, really, when you think about it. Farmers were told that they would be able to export to the EU single market, no problems, and also the rest of the world. But now they're going to have to compete with the rest of the world whilst also losing the EU single market. It's a joke. But yeah. Yeah, we would need 200 Australia trade deals to replicate what we've lost with Brexit. What more can you say apart from remember to like, comment, share, subscribe, support on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.